So I think this will be part nine of our advanced Scala tutorial. And today we are going to be talking about parsing and decoding JSON with Sensei. Now this is a very simple and clear uh, lesson because we are talking about JSON. So we have a block of JSON and this is called JSON literal. So if you have something like this, we call it a JSON literal. And to represent it in, in Scala, you simply enclose it in triple quotes, just like this. So we have this JSON literal. I want to pass this JSON and convert it into some object. In this case, we have personal data. Personal data, we have first name, last name, and we have another object right inside, and that's the address. And then we have phone number, which is a list of items. And so what you can see from here is we have three different objects. We have personal data, we have address, and we have a list of items, right? So I want to pass this. The first step is to pass, remember? So we pass uh, this into JSON. Sorry, I don't know why this. Oh, yeah, it's restarting. We pass it in, into JSON and then we have to um, decode into the instances of personal data and address. So what you do in this case is you have to recognize the data types here. In this case, we are going to create uh, two different data um, uh, classes, two different case classes. One is the personal data. And personal data is going to have first name, last name, address, and phone numbers. And then we are going to create another object, another class, case class, which is address, which will have street, city, state, and postcode. Now, all this is right here in my website, but normally I say you need to type everything out by yourself. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create this case class right inside here. I'm going to say case class. I'm going to call it, the first one is address. And then specify the field. So the field is going to be... Um, sorry, let me just say street. It's going to be string, right? String. And city is going to be string as well. And the next one, uh, state is going to be string. And finally, the postcode is going to be integer, all right? So this is our first case class and we are going to create, I'm going to create the next case class, which is personal data. Now this personal data case class is going to use the address case class. So I'm going to say class, again, if you are joining, joining for the first time, please remember to subscribe to my channel. And also if you have any challenges, please leave me a comment in the comment box below. Thank you. So personal data is also a case class and it has, now let's take note of what it has. We have first name, last name, First name is going to be string and last name is going to be string as well. And this time we have address, address. So it's, it's smart enough to recognize the address. The type for address is address. And then we have post, uh, post, uh, is it uh, post code or phone numbers? Okay, so it's going to be phone numbers, phone numbers and it's going to be list of what list of string so how do you specify a list of string i think it should be like this so let's just check okay so these are case classes so i have it right here so the next thing i'm going to do now is to build my decoder so i'm going to just build my decoders right inside here so let me put a comment that says build your decoders and i'm going to use it i'm going to use four comprehension to build this decoder so the first decoder i'm going to use i'm going to place it in the implicit scope implicit scope so that we can find it anytime we want so implicit val address decoder is going to be a decoder for address is going to take an address address cursor right so if you are building a decoder you need a cursor that is actually going to traverse the JSON. So that's why we have, we need to pass a parameter, which is the address cursor. I'm, I'm calling it the address cursor. We are going to use, a, we are going to use for comprehension to specify the fields of this, of the object that we are going to be decoding. And then at the end of the, at the end of the comprehension, we now use the yield to call the constructor. So I'm going to say, then the street is going to be the direction is going to be address cursor that gets uh, address cursor that gets um, so why do we have this error okay so I think yeah so I think I know where it's coming from so I, let's just continue 
so street and I'm going to simply copy and paste uh, into four places so I don't waste any time so I'm going to say paste 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 okay so here I'm going to change to what to city so it's gonna be city and this is going to be posts or states and finally we have post code and the same thing here we have city we have state and we have postcode we have postcode okay so we build this decoder so at the end of the day we are going to yield the address by constructing it using these are uh, the values we we got from the comprehension so we have city we have state and we have uh, postcode okay so hopefully this should go so why is it giving us this error so i think um let's see okay so we need to add a type annotation to tell the runtime that this is an address decoder so i don't know why you have to compose really add this type annotation so let's see so at this time i hope this error goes away so why do we still have this error um Okay, so I think we should just uh, continue. Let me see. Ah, oh, yeah. So it added the wrong, the wrong uh, annotation. So it's gonna be decoder for address. Okay. So yeah. So yeah. So this is it. So it has to. Um, it has to go. Okay. So I do have here. Okay. So I think we have a mistake. So this is gonna be the postcode. Uh, it's going to be integer, right? It's going to be integer. Okay, so we have our address decoder and let's now build our personal data decoder. So I'm going to put it in the implicit code as well, val personal data decoder. The decoder is going to take personal data. It's going to return a decoder for personal data and it's also going to take personal data um, personal data cursor and it's going to do for comprehension just make sure I'm not missing anything okay so for comprehension we are going to now use the personal data information so we have first name first name uh, first name gets personal data decoder personal data console dot get we can also use down fields. I think we can use the down field and specify. Um, yes, yeah, so let me not go that route because I can't remember exactly. So let's use the get and the get string and it's going to be first name. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste. Uh, into four places Let me just copy and paste again there are two other ways to build the coders like using the for uh, the products and uh, methods that's in, the, in this case you are building an applicative based decoder uh, so her first name we have last last name and we have address and we have um phone numbers okay and here we have first name we have last name and here we are going to have um uh, address and this is going to be coming from address uh and then we have phone numbers and this is going to be the type is going to be lists uh, list of what? List of string, right? Okay. And at the end of the day, we are going to yield uh, personal data, first name, last name, address, and phone numbers. Okay. Okay. So we built our two decoders now. So we are, we can now decode this JSON. I was talking about downfield, but I can't remember. Let me just try and see if I can get it. So personal data cost of the downfield. The downfield is first name uh, as, I don't know what I'm even doing. Is this correct? I'm not sure. So uh, 
Uh, maybe I'm just say string like this. Okay, I think this is also correct. So you see, I'm using downfield here. Oh no, it's not correct. Okay, so let's just forget about the downfield. I'm going to talk about this in another tutorial. So let's just use what we already have. So this is correct. So how then do we decode? Now, we need to pay attention to what I'm going to explain. The first thing to do is to pass. Remember we talked about passing. So I'm going to open this, um, this diagram. Now pay attention to this diagram. I'm going to be opening right here. I, I made sure I prepared this diagram in the very first tutorial. And this is this diagram right here. Okay. So here you see that the first step takes the JSON literal and pass it into either size of JSON, and then we are going to use a decoder to decode it. So these are this is a two-step process, but later I'm going to show you how to do it in just one step. So let's go ahead to first we are going to do the passing. So I'm going to create well personal data uh, literal. Past, uh, past is equal to we are going to use the past function and space and give it the personal data literal. Now my CPU is making a, a, a whole lot of noise. So now if I print out the past uh, personal data literal, personal data literal past, uh, let's see what we have. So we have it here. So it's past. So we get it. Uh, is correct. Uh, you can see right here. However, the passing function returns, if you look at it, it returns an either passing failure or JSON, right? Now, so what it means is that this personal data literal passed, uh, we cannot simply, it's not JSON, so we have to extract the JSON from it because it returns an either, right? Either here, as you can see. So to extract the JSON, I'm going to copy the code and paste because my CPU fan is kind of making hell of noise. So let me just not spend so much time on this video. So I'm going to paste this right here. Let me just reduce the font here. And I'm going to paste. So what is happening here is personal data JSON. I'm generating a personal data. Um, I'm creating a, um, this personal data JSON. It's going to be equal to personal data literal past, right? This one that match. So the right uh, is the JSON value that comes back, right? And the left is the error message or the coding failure. So if we look at it one more time, personal data, you can see, sorry, it's going to be this one. So if you look at it, you see in the left, you have person failure, on the right, you have JSON. So we are extracting the right and assigning it to this value. But if it fails, we extract the, uh, JSON, the error message and also assign it. So this is a JSON. I converted to the error message to JSON because this has to be a JSON. So at this point, we have the this guy here. So this is where we are currently. So then step two, we can now go ahead to do the coding. So the, to the code, you simply say, well, you simply call us as method or you simply use your uh, decoder from the implicit scope and, and specify what, what you want to decode. So I'm going to say personal data decoded is equal to personal data decoder or you can just say decoder um, sorry decode decodes um, one second yeah so I think I missed this. okay so Personal data is not decode. So I'm going, it's going to be personal data decoder. Personal data decoder. I'm going to use our decoder and pass it the JSON, right? You simply pass it the JSON. This is going to be personal data JSON dot H cursor. So here we now have our decoded value. So if I just print out the decoded value, so print line and personal data decoded, personal data, sorry, personal data decoded, we should have the decoded value of the JSON. So I'm going to simply run it one more time. And let's see, okay. Yeah, so we have the decoded value you can see right here. So we have this decoded value. So this is basically it, how to decode, uh, how to parse and decode at the same time. 
However, there's a hint I gave. So instead of going through this, you can actually do both the parsing and decoding in one go by simply calling the decode. So this decode method takes the decoder from the implicit scope and decodes um, and then you specify personal data and specify the JSON literal in this case. So I want you to try this yourself and you see it works perfectly well. I'm going to stop here in the next tutorial. I'm going to go further and talk about how to decode uh, more custom types using Sexy. I remain kind on the GL. I remain kind on the Tech Pro. If you have any challenges, please leave me a comment in the comment box below, and we'll see you in the next part.